There are a lot of really cool NFT projects going on at the moment, and this one is no exception. This one incorporates VR, virtual worlds, and an aquarium experience on Cardano. I really, really enjoyed playing around with this one. Now, I interviewed Tyler and he talks all about the project, their roadmap, what they're trying to do with it as well. I did this interview back in February, so it's a little bit late now. I did want to tie it into a whole metaverse uh, collection of videos, but that didn't quite eventuate. Project Catalyst always seems to get in the way. But I've put together this video and I thought I'd actually show you guys first what the experience is like. It's, it's one thing to talk about it and go, oh yeah, we're doing this, we're doing this. Yeah, the artwork looks great, but you got to see it to believe it. Now, let's let me just play this uh, a little clip and you can see what um, I'm actually experiencing here. So when you load up the environment, this is what you see. This is like a, a registration area and a login so you can load in your assets. And uh, this essentially is a lobby where you can uh, start your experience. And this is like an underwater station, which is really, really cool. And then you come up to this panel here. It if you want to check out some uh, existing environments and you can see the top aquariums that have been created in the experience so far. So I loaded up this environment here. This is uh, by Hookman. So this is the lead developer of the project. And you can see here all the assets slowly loading into the experience and the wall panels, the graphic art and the uh, Cardano proxies actually loading into this particular project. So I hadn't really looked into Cardano proxies before, but um, having a look here, they look absolutely stunning, especially in this underwater environment with the extra lighting effects coming in. And it looks really, really cool. And uh, you've got a little bit of a uh, background ambient music and you can see now the fish loading into the environment too. So look at that. That's absolutely fantastic. It's really cool. The, the fish are doing little twirls and loops as well. And uh, we'll, we'll just have a look at this guy here. There we go. How cool is that? Now, Tyler does talk about their behavior, the behavior of the fish, the moods, and uh, if they're scared of you or not. So there's a whole lot of uh, um, interactivity that you can have with the fish as well. So this is absolutely fantastic. You can see all the assets that have been added into the environment. So they're all NFTs too. So if you're, well, if you're wanting to actually interact with some of the NFTs, uh, you can place them wherever you want in the environment. So that's 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 another really cool uh, feature. So if you if, if you can see here, if you want to get into the project, you will have to buy a whole bunch of NFTs uh, to be able to do so. But let's get into the interview and uh, learn a little bit more about the project with Tyler. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get I have Tyler joining me from Bitfin, so kind of a unique CNFT project. I haven't seen this one in a while, but I've loved the development that's going through and what the Tyler here has been putting together. Tyler, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, Peter. Yeah, so let's start off firstly with a little bit about your background, how you got into crypto, and then how you discovered Cardano. Yeah, so um, I had studied crypto for the last couple of years. Um, I really got super deep into the financial markets at the beginning of 2020. Um, I actually started doing YouTube content and stuff as well. But basically around November of uh, 2020, uh, going into 2021, I started working at a firm, specifically T. Rowe Price. And I was like just handling like, you know, called savings, investment plans for people, helping them out with processing stuff with that. I was just doing the YouTube on the side. Um, got bored with Tiro Price, ended up getting a job at Fidelity. And so I was actually studying for securities licensing and stuff at Fidelity. Um, so I did get like my SIE and stuff. I was going for my seven and then just realized it was kind of like something I didn't want to do. And that was around the time I started diving into Cardano and NFTs a bit more. Um, so this was roughly between, you know, June and August um, that I started making that transition. I ended up leaving my job at Fidelity in August and then took about a month off between doing like any part-time job or anything, just went full deep into like crypto investing and, you know, Cardano NFT scene, got in a couple of different projects like Cardania and Bitlands. A lot of people probably know those. Um, and so I was pretty early investing, but I wasn't doing like anything on the development side. And basically how I evolved into doing my own stuff was more so I was hanging out in their discord, seeing how people reacted when Mints didn't go certain ways seeing how people uh, engage their communities, helped with like setting up discords and stuff. And that kind of put me in a position to where 
I could see, um, you know, what I could possibly do in the scene myself. So. And then from there, you decided to start the Bitfins project. Can you tell everyone a little bit about what it is? Like you've gone through season one that sold out. So congratulations mm -hmm. on that. Can you describe you. about, can you describe the project, what it's all about and what you're trying to achieve? Yeah. So the concept came about super late August. So I think the earliest DMs I can remember, I was actually, so the guys that do our minting now are retro NFTs. Um, they're pretty OG in the community. They've got their own platform or project they're working on over the next couple of years. Uh, but I started talking to them and I was like, Hey, you know, like I haven't seen a project like this in the community. There's not a lot of utility. I like aquariums. What do you think of this? And basically when I sent those DMs, I started working on 2D Photoshop stuff that I was doing of like the first couple of fish. And the first fish I actually ever designed was like the jawbreaker um, that a lot of people see, you know, like the one with a super big jaw and everything. And so is I sent that, them off to that. that the red one, the red one with the blue jaw? Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's that one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a lot of people really like that one, but that was actually literally the first actual one that I finished. And I was like, okay, this is going to be the first fish. Um, so I sent it off to them. They liked the idea kind of floated around to a couple of people that I was connected with through like Bitlands and Cardania. It was like, what are your thoughts on a project like this? Um, and everybody was like, yeah, dude, you should just go for it. So I started going into it. Um, basically wrote the white paper within like a week and a half, two weeks of basically conceptualizing it and sending it off to people. Um, and that was around when we started the Twitter because we started the Twitter like mid September, early September. Um, so we went from there. Uh, I was my own person on the team at the time. So I was the only person, but I knew I was like, okay, well, if I get it going, I can always find somebody full-time for game dev and stuff or learn myself. So one way or another, I was going to get to the point where we're going to have the aquarium. I was already dead set on doing it. And I kind of stumbled across our main game dev. Uh, he goes by Hookman now. Um, so his name's Matt. Um, and he was doing a museum gallery kind of project for Cardano. And he was super new to the scene. So he's uh, been doing like game development and stuff as a hobby for years now. Um, and he was trying to find his way in. And basically if you load up your address in the museum, it would auto populate your stuff on the walls. And I was like, dude, this is literally like what I'm trying to do with like the aquarium. So I hit him up, you know, he was like tentative at first, obviously. Cause you know, I think at the time we had like 400, 500 followers on Twitter, you know, we hadn't minted anything. So I was like, yeah, just keep it open. Um, I'll reach back out in a week. So we're at, and then we started doing our pre-sale. We sold out a pre-sale um and then reached back out to him he was like yeah I'm, I'm interested so then we got him on board and he was like one of the first people i got up fully on board um so basically the whole idea for the concept of it for anybody that doesn't know before i go more in details on the team is it's an interactive aquarium but it's not just like an aquarium you'd see in your house right the whole idea is it's a giant underwater cardano ocean ecosystem essentially so when you load in your aquarium you're actually loading into a piece of the ocean and it's just in a confined environment that you design how you want. So it's like the Sims or, you know, like Animal Crossing, you get all your assets and you're like, all right, I want to do this in this corner. I want to put my plants here, put all my other NFTs here. Um, and as it's gone on, we've evolved some ideas. We're kind of going for like some subnautica vibes. So you'll load into like an underwater kind of building is the idea long term. You'll kind of walk down hallways to pick your biomes. You'll be able to pick small, medium, large aquariums. Um, a lot of different stuff like that. So that's kind of like the basis of it. And you can already use your other Cardano NFTs in it. You basically load in a frame that runs as an iframe and it works even with on-chain NFTs. We're still working it for like Cardano trees, but something like Awoken Algorithms, it will endlessly loop inside of the frame in your aquarium as well. So <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. So um, yeah, other than that, I mean, the, the rest of our team is uh, we've got like five people now totally. So um, we've got our main guy that's doing the 3d models of the fish. So I come up with the designs of the fish and then I'm like, yo, here, just make it pretty for the aquarium essentially. Um, and he's from Ethiopia. He's pretty chill. He's the one that's been doing all the like 3d space model um, of the, the 3d models of the space buds and all those other crazy ones that people have been seeing. Um, right. Yeah. So we've got him full time. He was a freelancer in Upwork that we found for the fish. And I was like, yo dude, I can hire you for like long-term stuff. If you want to come on, he's like, yeah, I'm down. So we've got him on full time. We've got a guy from India who helped make the original NFT boxes. Um, and he does stuff. He helped make the main design of the Cory token and then taught me how to retexture. So I retextured a lot of the boxes and made everything like clean post-processing. And he helps with like baking the textures into Unity. So we got all that. So basically I'll finish the main design, send it off to one of those two guys. 
they finish their part and then we'll send it off to hook in the game dev. And then we've got a marketing intern and he's actually going to college in Cali and he's actually getting college credit to our program too. So it's pretty cool. That's amazing. It's, it's really cool to see like after that first mint, that first successful mint and uh, people saw that there was uh, traction with the project. So there was, you know, interest that um, the rest of the team was quite easy to formulate after that um, initial start of the process. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And I've also seen some of the 3D videos of the actual aquarium itself. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I swear I saw like uh, the fish and you can go underwater and you can experience all the initial renderings that you had. Is that, is that right? Yeah. So we actually have a live beta. So if, um, you, I think you have to put HTTPS before it with the address forwarding. So don't just type this in, but if you go to aquarium.bitfins.io, you can actually already make a login in the beta, verify multiple wallets of your own. So you send ADA to yourself, paste the TX in, and it'll verify you're the mm -hmm. owner. You can load in, it'll verify all of the fish that you own and load all of the fish into your aquarium. Um, if you've got assets, so like we're coming up with a decoration mint, if, like in a couple of weeks here in February, um, once you have those decorations, it'll let you load those decorations in and put them in your aquarium. And then it'll load the rest of your wallet as well for literally all of your NFTs. And you would just go pick the floating frames that we have, and you could pick any of your NFTs and displayed in there, and it'll automatically adjust to the dimensions of it so it doesn't crop them out or anything. <laughs> That's so cool. Now, um, do you have to buy any of these decorations that you have in your aquarium? So you're like the season one was about the fish. So you buy the fish, you can have them uh, animate around in your aquarium. But what about all the decorations and all that that go in the aquarium as well? Do you have to purchase them as NFTs? Um, so yes, as of now, those would be like a bit more unique. We'll have a couple like base assets because we know like we want to make it more accessible for people, right? Yeah. So we'll have a couple like generic assets that we'll have. They won't necessarily be anything crazy. They might even be like stock assets, like stock plants from like a unity pack or something. Um, nothing too, too crazy. But if you want like all the unique stuff or anything, um, we'll be having those minted out in series. Like we'll have future fish series, we'll have future decoration series, and they'll be kind of themed. Like the upcoming decoration series we have now, we're going to have like a holographic series. So you'll have like a holographic satellite, coral, plants, statues. So you can tie it all together. Then we'll have like a lava set. Um, we're just going to have like generic like colors, like pink, red, blue for your different things. So you can kind of fit around a theme if you want, even inside of the series, if you really want to go all out. But the we are going to make the decorations cheaper than the fish because we want people to be able to have a lot of stuff to customize yeah. with. Yeah. Um, like this like this main set, I think right now we're, we're looking at before we get to the minting, it's 60 to 70 unique assets based on like their different things that they are and their colors. So it'll be a lot of variety if you mint. I think the mint, the max we're going to make it right now is about 20 ADA. So it's nothing crazy. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's uh, the, the lower, like you said, the lower that you can make that price, the, uh, uh, the lower mm -hmm. the barrier to entry and more people can actually have their aquariums. What's the current floor price of uh, original season one Bitfins? Um, so I think the fish last I saw was around like 60, 65. And that's almost up twice from where we were minting. So our pre-sale was about 25 ADA to mint. And then our main launch, it was about 35 ADA. So Okay. I missed that. Damn it. <laughs> I have to jump back in and get one on the secondary market. Um, so that way I can load up an aquarium and, and have a little bit of an experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think a lot of people are kind of um, pricing them weird too. Like a lot of people realize like the utility. So like if um, anybody checks out our white paper, we do have extra utility for the commons and uncommons. So like your commons long-term can be eaten by future carnivore spirits, uh, <laughs> by, by future carnivore fish, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so basically your commons will have a rare chance to be eaten by the carnivore if it's in your tank. So like, you know, just I think like a Megalodon or something. Um, and then what would happen is we're going to try to use Adam Dean's Ludo token that they came up with. I don't know if you've ever looked into that, but basically it's a system to mint an NFT based off of an action happening in your aquarium. So we're going to try to adapt that to where once your fish is eaten, your token would get sent to an escrow wallet and you'll be sent back a randomly a skeleton or ghost fish that matches the fish that got <laughs> ate. So, That's brilliant. That is absolutely yeah. brilliant. I love that. Like, like creating that. Um, if you just had your NFT, it's there for life, right? It, it's there mm -hmm. for eternity because it's on the blockchain, but having that extra uh, interactivity, uh, on the aquarium. That's really cool. 
Mm-hmm. Now, in, in terms of um, interacting, can you interact with another aquarium? So that's our end game we're trying to go for. Um, really, we're focusing on the single player aspect and getting that up and running. But we are registered with PlayFab servers through Microsoft. If uh, anybody listening is familiar with that. So essentially, they run like a lot of the voice servers and friends lists for Xbox games and stuff like that. So what we're trying to do is once we're done with the main setup, we're going to try to expand into where you could add friends inside of the engine and visit their aquariums, similar to like you could do on Animal Crossing or something. Yeah. Okay, cool. I was uh, kind of wanting to use my carnivore fish and attack other other players and um, create more ghost fish uh, for other <laughs> people. But m- maybe that's a little bit too harsh <laughs> and, and maybe not quite the uh, action you want to take. I know some people were talking about loaning out their assets. So maybe you could loan them your carnivore fish. They, they, they have to like run it from you if they want some ghost fish. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So in terms of like your community engagement, you must be getting a lot of feedback and ideas from the community. Uh, has mm-hmm. some crazy stuff come out that you've actually decided to implement into the roadmap? Uh, yeah. So um, the Cory token uh, that we have, so we have a utility token called Cory. It's uh, if you've seen it floating around, it's like this pink and blue kind of like crazy tech looking 3D token. Um, and it looks like an NFT. It just looks like, you know, just whatever, if you just look at it. But if you look at the white paper pages for it, there's actually a lot of utility for it. It's pretty much almost every aspect of the project it'll be involved in. And so that came from the retro guys. Actually, I was talking one on the um one of them in DMs one day and he was like, dude, it'd be cool if you could like breed your fish and other people had brought up like breeding the fish at some yeah. point, but we wanted to make sure it's not doing like some weird stuff where it's kind of tweaking with the supply or anything. So then he brought up that idea and I was like, yeah, that would be cool. And I thought of how hype skulls is actually doing their process of like you morph your hype skull with vapor and they'll like make you a whole new render. I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool aspect. So then I started thinking about different things and it's kind of weird because I told people this, I was, I was literally playing like Halo at the time when I was just like thinking about it. So I'll just get like random sparks of like things and stuff. So I was, I was sitting playing Halo with like one of my friends. I was like, hold on, dude, give me like 20 minutes. So I went and like, <laughs> I wrote up the white paper page for Corey in like 20 yeah. minutes and came back to it later that night to like finalize it. But basically I was like, yeah, let's make this token. We'll give it a few different things and it'll go towards that route. So that's where it came in where like, if your ghost or skeleton fish, uh, is something you want to bring back for your new fish. You could submit a token and that goes for skeleton fish and revive your fish with the token. Um, you could use that token. If you've got like four of them, you can breed your fish. So basically you'll submit two of your uncommons and you're like, I want to breed a hawk a hawk fin and a jawbreaker you send the two uncommons and then the four quarry and then a fee of ada and we'll breed your fish for you essentially through a vending process and give you a new nfc um and then also you use your quarry for mutation so you can get, actually get a one of one coloration of one of your fish species too if you submit one of your nfts that's an uncommon so say if you want like a jawbreaker that's like got like a purple mouth and it's got like a yellow body or something you could, would submit that to us and ask and we'll set it up for you that's really cool i, I love that the, the evolution and the the utility of the um the token as well so that's uh, absolutely fantastic it sounds like you guys are in for a pretty cool 2022 with all this development, all these features and everything that's coming out. Did you um, uh, build this? Is it just in like Unity Engine or something like that? Yeah. So right now we have it as a WebGL. So you just load in the website and then long term we'll have like a downloadable package. And then extremely long term, we're looking to do like mobile capabilities. So right now, technically, I think if you have a decent Android, you could load it hypothetically on your phone. It's just not going to be great. Um, long term, we want to have it ported for Apple, like Mac right now. It's kind of glitchy, so we're still working it out. My game dev actually just bought like a Mac mini, so he could try to figure out some of those coding issues and test it himself. Um, and then one of the main things is we're actually talking with nano frames about doing native integration into nano frames. And we've already been talking about like some of the tech of basically just having like an app where you can load up your aquarium in a nano frame and you don't even have to have a computer or anything, just load up your aquarium and you'd be able to control it from like a wireless remote thing on your phone or something. Crazy. So a nano frame for people that don't know, it's one of those frame picture frames you can have on your wall. You just plug it in, it's Wi-Fi enabled and away you go. So I'm assuming it'll be like an app or something that will load up the uh, NFT wallet and hey, presto, there's your aquarium. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Crazy. Mate, this is some really cool development and some, some really cool ideas that you've put together. I absolutely love it. 
Um, have you thought about integrating in like NAMI wallet or something like that to uh, pull in the assets that way? So we're not doing like a, a transaction thing um, to make uh, make it work that way. Because like, you know, some people get annoyed having to send themselves transactions and verify a wallet that way. But connecting like Unity to a, a NAMI wallet or a Web3 wallet just to load in those assets. Yeah, so long term, we are going to be moving towards multi-sig transactions for minting and stuff too. So we'll probably port some of that over. The main issue right now is we want it again, like, you know, just compatibility for as many people as possible. And a lot of people have issues with NAMI or you can't do it if you're a mobile user. Maybe you just want to send the transaction from your mobile um, and do that stuff. And then you can get the TX later, send it to yourself. So right now we're just trying to keep it open ended for anybody to do it for any wallet. But as more wallets are capable of doing multi-sig transactions and stuff, that's more likely what we'll move towards. Yeah, it's hey, like this is a really we, cool project. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> I have no yeah, idea it's like, went this deep. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a lot of people that kind of don't realize it. I think that's what was part of our slow growth was too. It was like a thing of like some people that like read into it. They were like, I don't know if they're actually going to be able to develop this. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's, all right, you know, healthy skepticism. And then the other side is just like people don't read into it because like we still get like there's people minting Corey yesterday. They're like, what the hell do I do with a Corey? I'm like, dude, <laughs> like here's a white paper pitch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How long is the white paper? It didn't look that long. Uh, the main white paper is like seven pages, I think, it's including not that the, long. the thing. And then we've got like three or four extras in the Discord that I still got to put into like a V2 compiled thing. They like formatted different things so they look weird when they put it together. I, I basically just have to repaste and stuff in. But yeah, so it's like, I think it's like 10 pages at this point. It's not crazy, but it's still a little more in depth than a lot of projects do. Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay. So you did the artwork call yourself, like the very first uh, original fish? Yeah. So I did all the fish by layering shapes in Photoshop. I can't draw for anything. So it was all yeah. like shape layering and, you know, color adjustments and all that fun stuff. And then like, like for our white paper, we took like some stock asset stuff, like coral and stuff like that's yep. whatever. I wasn't too worried about that. And then uh, the website, I gave the assets that we wanted to use to the retro guys. They did our website as well. So basically, um, I basically looked as many routes as healthy outsourcing as possible for stuff. So I could handle like all of the like planning and marketing and doing all the baseline art that I could do myself. And then, you know, we're not getting bottlenecked anywhere. So like, if I'm working on one thing, I can send it to one guy. I work on another thing, send it to another guy. And we've got like three parts moving at the same time. Yeah. 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 You did pretty well with the artwork considering that, um, you know, it's, it's not your thing. It's, it's not your main, mm-hmm. um, you know, skill. Uh, the, the jawbreaker looks cool. I like it. Yeah. Thanks dude. Yeah. It's uh, it was a lot of experimentation. I had some weird fish. Like we had this weird, like <laughs> demonic looking slug fish with like flames from its tail at the beginning. I don't know if I'm going to adapt that and put it in the future, but yeah, we've got, we had a lot of weird stuff at first and I was just like, yeah, let me just do like these weird gumball looking fish bodies for like the yep. first series. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think it worked out well. When's the next uh, mint date for season two and when would we see like some of these features in terms of being able to decorate our um, aquariums and uh, when we go out of beta and all that? So the next major mint, we just finished minting out Corey. So we opened like a very small mint. It was like, even for public, it was like six ADA to mint a Corey token. And originally we airdropped them to people for free in December. Um, So we just finished that as of, the day before us recording this um and the main next minute will be decorations the week of the 15th of february is the plan uh, we don't have a definitive date but closer we get to that we'll be there um but that's about the week we're targeting right now um just because we wanted to make sure our queuing system worked and so that was part of the quarry process too making sure the minting would be smooth with congestion and stuff going on right now for that um whole segment And then the planned, we are way ahead of schedule for our development, but we're not going to like change expectations. So right now we are still projecting second half uh, by second half 2022 of having the full aquarium out. Um, So we're looking like June, July latest is the target for having the full public version out. Um, I mean, technically the beta is public now, but that would be like the full end design where we've got everything leading up to like your load in area. You can pick your biomes, have a whole bunch of environment design, all that stuff. Absolutely brilliant. That's, re- that's actually really soon. It's, it's good that you're taking into account the congestion on the network as well. Uh, are you expecting long delays at the moment, even with some of these block size increases and whatnot that IG are doing? Um, not necessarily from a minting perspective. I think right now, if you set up your minting, it should be pretty decent. So like, for example, our Corey stuff, 
basically within 30 hours, we sold out of like 1,650 coins. And we had almost all of those minted within like five or six hours after we sold out. Um, so that's still a pretty decent amount um, for where we were. Um, it's just mostly making sure you have a proper queuing system right now, I think, as a project. Yeah. So a lot of that's just tempering expectations saying, hey, you may wait in line to actually get your address, but you will get your NFT. I think the biggest delay right now is refunds because we have seen that some refunds or stuff are taking like 12 plus hours. So that's why people need to read instructions, especially for our stuff, because otherwise they're going to be out quite a bit for a little while. So th this all sounds really awesome, but is there anything else that you're holding out on us? So is there anything else interesting that you guys have lined up in the roadmap? Yeah. So outside of it, just being a secondary art piece, you could have on your wall and just watch your fish on a secondary monitor or something. Uh, we do have a virtual reality component to it where basically you could scuba dive inside of your own aquarium. And when you get in <laughs> VR, it is way bigger. So um, whether that's you want to walk around the bottom of your aquarium or you want to swim around amongst your fish, uh, we do have that feature that is available for you to try if you do have VR goggles on Mozilla Firefox right now. And oh then, my God. All right. Yeah. And then inside of that, the end game is um, we do have an XP system that's going to be based on how long you're holding your fish. And so yeah. how that'll influence is the longer you hold it, the bigger your fish will be out of like the max size it could be. Um, there will be added customizability. And then there will also be moods. So like if you just buy your fish, maybe it's a little scared of you. If you're in VR, it'll swim away from you. But if you're in VR and you've held it for like a good couple months, you've got that good rapport, your fish will kind of swim up to you and you'll be able to pet it and stuff like that. <laughs> that's absolutely brilliant. All, all those little in-game mechanics that you can add to it. That's absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. I was about to, so, so you need like an Oculus Rift or something like that to actually uh, immerse yourself in the VR experience. Yeah, I think just like any VR goggles should work right now. Um, yeah. Long term, we're going to try to port for as much compatibility as possible. But yeah, just as long as you have goggles, if you load it in Firefox right now, you should be able to do it. Right. Okay. Something else I need to play around with too. Great. Okay. All right. Brilliant. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing this project launch and a little bit more of it. So like I said, I haven't got one of the Bitfin, so I'm going to jump on a secondary marketplace and see if I can find one and start playing around with your aquariums. But it sounds like an absolutely awesome project. I will jump on and have a deeper look and see what you guys are doing. But um, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast, Tyler. It's been an absolute pleasure learning more about Bitfins. And I'll get my hands dirty on this and uh, play around with it a little bit more. Awesome. Thank you for having me. So I hope you guys really enjoyed that interview. Now in the interview, Tyler did mention the floor price was around that 60 ADA mark. It has dropped significantly since and is hovering around the 15, 17 ADA mark as well. The market has crashed, people have cashed out and the uh, floor price of the fish has dropped significantly, which makes it a lot easier for anyone that wants to buy them on the secondary market at the moment. You can do so and play around with your own aquarium on Bitfins itself. I did have a little play around with it. There are a couple little bit of uh, bugs in the interface. So I had a little bit of an issue loading up the uh, actual aquarium and registering. So try that out first, uh, buy, maybe buy one fish if you, if you can afford it. Try out the interface and try out the uh, actual app itself and give it a go and see how the whole process works. It's a very unique, very cool uh, interactive experience. Absolutely love what the team are doing. And I'm really looking forward to seeing this one get ironed out and uh, move out of their beta stage and move on to their mainnet and their full launched application as well. So good luck to the team for the entire project. Really hope this one goes well. And if you really enjoy this type of content, please consider giving me a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the notification bell, and you'll hear more from me soon. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast Gotta get it hype, crypto is what we like But this is not investment or financial advice Gotta do your research, cause it's risky, we know it is This show is educational and it's informative Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate